The one page preface to my story is stretched to nearly six pages in the Malayalam version, Ende Katha, a rather strenuous exercise considering the fact that the Malayalam autobiography as a whole is much shorter than the English one. Madhavi Kuti, in the preface to Ende Katha, takes great pains to place her narrative identity inside the world of textual conventions yet outside it. More of a testimony than a confession, Madhavi Kuti here seems to address a culture whose expectations of conformity to an ideal of the feminine she cannot cater to. In contrast, the preface to my story ends thus, I quote, this book has cost me many things I hold dear, but I do not for a moment regret having written it. I have written several books in my lifetime, but none of them provided the pleasure of writing my story. I have nothing more to say." Unquote. It is significant that this preface is found only in the Sterling edition published from New Delhi in 1976. The DC Books edition published from Kerala in 2004 omits this preface. The preface to Endakatha begins thus, I quote, A few years ago, one day in the afternoon, a sparrow flew into my room through the small window. Its breast hit the turning blades of the fan and the bird was thrown down. Hitting the window pane, it clung to the glass for a few seconds. The blood from its breast stained the glass. Today, let my blood ooze down to these pages. Let me write in that blood. Let me write without the burden of a future, as only one can write, making each word a compromise. I would love to call this poetry. I always wished I had the strength to write this, but poetry never ripens for us we have to acquire the maturity for it." Unquote. Here, Madhavi Kuti is seen to renegotiate Kamala Das's relationship to the act of writing. The last sentence seems to emphasize that society needs to change in order to accept her writings. She turns the tables on societal norms and yet the pressures of conformity catch up with her as is evident in her many denials later on to the veracity of Endakatha. The self that is outwardly projected in my story or Endakatha is a self that tries to fit in to conform at least on the surface. The self is seen to situate and organize society and culture. Yet what ultimately triumphs is the notion that selves are only contingent and tenuous, created and negotiated through relationships with the external world. But even here, there is a difference in these two texts. My story is more unapologetic and direct in its narration, while Endikatha is informed by a sense of intersubjectivity, a consciousness of the self as framed and limited by its interactions with the symbolic order. A wariness towards the audit culture is omnipresent in Endekatha. Probably, Madhavi Kuti is more conscious in her negotiations with the culture of the Malayalam language and its literary repertoire, knowing fully well that there are greater issues at stake in the autobiography's encounter with the social order in her own native place or in her own language and culture than in English. A mere look at the chapter headings will illustrate this point. The sterling edition of my story has 50 chapters, some of which are titled, I was infatuated with his charm. Another title, women of good Nair families never mentioned sex. Was every married adult a clown in bed, a circus performer? Yet another title, her voice was strange. It was easy for me to fall in love with her. His hands bruised my body and left blue and red marks on the skin. Sex and the cooperative movement. Yet another title, I too tried adultery for a while or sex 
uh, sorry, I was never an nymphomaniac. That is, a, that is another title. I was never an nymphomaniac. Again, strikingly, all these titles are changed in the 2004 DC edition of My Story. For example, I was infatuated with his charm. The title, I was infatuated with his charm, is changed into the innocuous title, The Village School. While the title, Women of Good Nair Families Never Mentioned Sex, becomes the feudal system. None of the original titles find place in the Malayalam version, which has chased headers like the meaning of the word love, the season called beauty, or morality and rebirth, etc. Thus, here we have a writer, translator, beset by different levels of cultural intervention while writing, translating in two different languages. Even the year and place of publication assume important dimensions. An intense awareness of a socially uh, constituted sexuality is seen to be narrated, however subversively, with an acute awareness of the policing medium of culture which a language represents. Thus, the expectations of conformity to a feminine cultural ideal is more on Madhavi Kuti than on Kamladas, and hence disguises the and, um, uh, and hence disguises the ambiguities at the structural and narrational level of the text, which is more in Endakatha than my story. This leads to a situation where what is written in one autobiography has not been translated into the other or what is translated has not been written. Madhavi Kuti's cultural identity often acts as a block in Endakatha, forcing her to take more circuitous routes of narration. For example, the first meeting with her husband, her sex his sexual advances, their engagements, the subsequent visit to Calcutta are all described in a simple chronological straightforward manner in my story. But in Endakatha, these incidents are compressed into two pages with philosophic ruminations and forward gems in time. In all parts of the narrative where gender roles are crucial, Endakatha displays a marked transferential tension at play which is not so evident in my story.